right, I'm going to be reading from a pretty amazing book uh, by Isha Swaller de Lubix, the wife of R.A. Swaller de Lubix. It's called The Opening of the Way, A Practical Guide to the Wisdom Teachings of Ancient Egypt. And this is a tiny little chapter. It's only about a little over a page long. But she is discussing in Hermetic Principles the nature of the ego, the self, the duality that exists in consciousness, and the aim of transcending the ego. It's beautifully written. So the name of this, uh, the name of this chapter is actually called The Aim, The Aim. Here we go. Our aim is to realize the superhuman state by awakening and uniting the permanent witness with that of the highest self. The way is the conscious reanimation of the entire body, the confirmation of the interplay between its functions and all its vital reactions. It is finally the recognition of the several roles of the two witnesses. Thus, will be formed in the Melu in which the spiritual nucleus will grow until it fills the entire man and generates the incorruptible body of which the physical body will only be the apparent envelope and the obedient instrument. To pursue this path without being deflected, the first requirement is the gradual destruction of the automatic behavior by learning to recognize the drama which is fought out of the human being to know the combatants and their weapons. This drama is the duel between the two wills, the personal will and the will of the light. And what she's talking about here is the personal will is obviously the, the ego, uh, super ego, persona, the mask, um, the illusion, the maya. And the will to light is the impersonal will or the, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit in wholeness, infinite consciousness. Many human beings know nothing of this drama. Those who, whose brain consciousness make so much noise that the two witnesses cannot be heard, in these, who are the legion, the automatic self reigns uncontrolled, having nothing to restrain it but an atavistic moral sense and the conventional religious or social rules of its education. Moral problems for such people can only be a choice between obeying their established moral code and breaking it at the bidding of self-interest or instinct. The majority is not interested in spiritual anxieties or in the way which the present work attempts to open. The few whom the sages address themselves to are aware of an anxiety caused by the more or less frequent appeals of their higher consciousness, the permanent witness, and the spiritual witness. If the permanent witness is the only one to manifest, it creates a wish to gain mastery over the automaton and act knowingly instead of being at the mercy of its thoughts and impulses. In such a case of mastery, that can be attained will never be more than the realization of the ego as an entity in itself without any attempt at union with the impersonal self. The drama is then simply a struggle to reduce the automaton to an obedient slave and to gain personal powers of various kinds. The real drama begins either when the spiritual witness attempts to dominate the automaton, which leads to abnegation of the ego and mystical aestheticism, or Else, when the permanent witness is invited by the spiritual witness to cooperate in realizing the superhuman state through the supremacy of the divine impersonal element in man. And what she's saying there is what, what Christians would term the will of God, sort of uh, choosing your own personal free will to align with the will of God. Or, in other ways, transcending the ego. Or using your free will to align with universal and cosmic principles of wholeness, holiness, or unity consciousness. This is the beginning of the duel, 
the struggle between the personal will and the will to the light. If you allow this duel to take place, you must realize that your whole body will be the battleground. The spiritual nucleus is divine in essence, but in order to rediscover its power, it must be beget itself in the human heart and go through the process of mortification, rebirth, and resurrection. Key point there. The only way to transcend the ego is through the awareness and divinity in the heart. And this is um, n- not just a mental maneuver. It's a, a full body maneuver. It's an emotional maneuver. It's a spiritual maneuver, a psychic maneuver. And the process of mortification, rebirth, and resurrection. So this is, this is what the ego will continually do. The ego will continually die, be reborn, where you get to wield it again, and then resurrect it into a higher state or a state where your personality is constantly willfully transcending its limitations. It is the disastrous error to consider the soul as an ethereal intelligence enthroned somewhere high above yourself or in the world and to think that you have to attain it by raising yourself on the wings of idealism and aspiration above your body and the earth. No earthly man can perceive spirit except in his own flesh and this no mere literary simile, but a most positive reality. You can only find your God by generating him in yourself in the darkness of your own body. For he takes cognizance of a substance, then he becomes its God. This substance can have no God but its own, when once it has become his cradle and his temple. There is no God but God, and no light but the Word, But each creature can know only its own word, and the Father of light is unknowable and inaccessible to those who have not learned to partake of his oneness. A basic, fundamental teaching of Hermeticism is that, as above, so below, the cosmos is within man, or God is within man, and that the human body is, in fact, the temple of God, quite literally. The height must penetrate the depth. If you wish the depth to become as your height to accomplish the miracle of the one thing, as says in the emerald table. But since there are depth and height, neither can be moved without the other, and they depend on each other. And the light, or the word, shineth in darkness, in quotes. Certain timid persons deny its presence in abject places and manure as a sacrilegious idea, but the blasphemy lies in such doubt. To the spirit, nothing is unclean, save those who reject it. The vilest filth can accept the spirit, but rational thought and the ego witness can reject it, because each of them can imagine that it is itself the light. If you desire the light, be sure that you will never find it except by begetting it in your own darkness. Do not blasphemy by calling it incompatible with the darkness of matter. For matter would not exist if the light were not already formed within it. And this light, so soon as awakened, will become your master, full of power, your God dwelling in you, who transforms all effort into joy, all storms into exaltation, all mysteries and doubts into knowledge. Only beware not to remain in indecision. Have the courage to sound your depths and choose your path. Half-heartedness and compromise can only lead to useless suffering. There it is, The Aim by Isha Swaller-Deluix, The Opening of the Way.